Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to the fifth video in my Radio Master TX 16 S series. In this video, we're going to take a much closer look at logical switches and special functions. Now, for those of you who are unaware of the fact that you were watching the fifth video in a series, please direct your attention to the description below where there'll be a link to the playlist that contains all the videos in this series. So this series is primarily directed at multi-rotor users who are using Betaflight, and the protocol that we're going to be using in this video is an FRSky D16. If you're using a different protocol, I still feel that you're going to get value out of this video in terms of learning what logical switches and special functions do, so please stick around. All right, so what we're getting ready to do is not easy. And instead of starting at zero and walking you through from zero to 10, I wanna just go straight to 10. And I wanna show you what our final goal is. Because I think that if you can see the final product, as we're going through all of the steps, it will help you to understand what we're trying to accomplish. What we're trying to accomplish is the ability to tune our PIDs in flight on the fly using only three switches on the radio and having audio cues so that we never ever have to look down at our radio. Now I am aware of the fact that Betaflight has Lewis scripts which accomplishes the same goal. My only issue with the Lewis scripts is that I still find myself looking down a lot at the radio as I try to navigate through the menus to make my changes. With this methodology and the audio cues, you'll just flick a switch, make your change, and you'll never have to look down. And as an added bonus in a future video in this series, we're actually going to take this three switch approach and combine it with the beta flight Lewis scripts so that you get the best of both worlds. Now, I also want to acknowledge the fact that my three switch PID tuning in the air technique is rendered completely obsolete if you happen to have goggles and an on screen display. But the fact of the matter is, is that some people like to fly line of sight and other people either have not purchased goggles yet or just plain simply can't afford them. Having acknowledged that having goggles in an on-screen display is the single best methodology for which you can PID tune in the air, I still submit this as an alternative solution. And it also makes for a great example for my logical switches and special functions video. So without further ado, let's take a look at what we're trying to accomplish. Whether or not you know how to tune your PIDs at this point is irrelevant. The important thing here is to see how we've used logical switches and special functions to accomplish our goal. So let's take a look at switch SA. Switch SA, okay, is going to have three values. It's going to have roll, pitch, and yaw. This is my roll. This is my pitch. This would be my yaw. And switch B is going to be my PID values. So proportional, integral, and derivative. So if I wanted to change, say, for example, roll integral, all I would have to do, this is already in the roll position. I'll flip this. Roll integral. And I get roll integral. Here we get. Roll derivative. And then back. Roll to, integral. Roll and, proportional. And then back to roll proportional. Likewise, I can use, I can flip this switch. Pitch proportional. And. Your proportional. Okay. So you kind of get an idea that we're multiplying these two three position switches together to get nine different values. All right, so if we're up in the air and we decide we need to change our roll proportional, we're just going to- Pitch gonna, proportional, roll proportional. We're going to get in a roll proportional and say our, our current setting is something like 50. All right, it's an arbitrary number. What we're going to use SC to do is if our current value is 50 and we wanted to change it by an increment of five, we would use the SC switch and we would flick it one, two, three, four, five. And it would actually change the value on the fly. And then essentially at this point, your quad would fly differently. Once you get your quad flying the way you like it, essentially what you would do is you would land, you could look down at your beta flight Lewis script screen. You could actually save the changes right there. So that's what our three switches do. So now what our problem is, is that Currently, there's no way for Betaflight to be able to accept nine different values on one channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine SA and SB using logical switches and special functions. And we're going to send them to a dummy channel that has nine different values that can be read by Betaflight on the adjustment screen. And this is essentially what it will look like. So we're going to 
We're going to send everything to one channel and we're going to have increments of 25. You'll see that in a little bit. And so Betaflight's going to be able to ascertain based on where the little cursor is, what range we're in. And based on that, we'll be able to apply a Betaflight change for that particular value. So we're going to actually have nine of them. And as you can see, roll P, roll I, roll D, and it keeps going down for all nine. All right, so another thing that I want to show you is how we've combined SA and SB to affect channel 11. Right now, channel 11's value is negative 100. And if I were to flick SB, you'll notice that channel 9 and channel 11 both are impacted. Roll integral. Okay, channel, channel 9 is impacted and channel 11 changed to negative 75. If we flick it again, it'll change to negative 50. Roll derivative. All right, so right now you can see that channel 11 is at negative 50. And then if we reset the deck. Roll integral. Roll proportional. And then change this to pitch, we'll be at negative 25. Pitch proportional. And then zero. Pitch integral. And then 25. Pitch derivative. And we have to reset the deck. Pitch integral. Pitch proportional. Your proportional. And we're at 50. Your integral. 75. Your derivative. 100. So you'll see how that comes into play later. But essentially what, what we've done is we've taken SA and SB and we've combined them into logical switches. So what we've done here is we've taken the SA and SB up switches and we've combined them into a single value called logical switch one. And then if we flip to special functions and we go and we find our logical switch one right here, it is being assigned a task and that task is to override channel 11 and set it to negative 100. So you already saw that in action. And what channel 11 is, if we go back to our inputs, we've set channel 11 up as a dummy. We needed an available channel and channel 11 was open, so we used it. So there's, there it is on inputs and here it is on mixes. It's just a dummy channel. And as you can tell, I have a bunch of overrides for channel 11. We're going to come back to all of this. Then the next thing that we did was the same thing that we've done in a previous video where we're using special functions to play tracks. So stick around and I'll walk you through all the data entry to make all of this a reality. All right, good news, bad news. The bad news is that we've got to do a bunch of data entry. The good news is that we're going to be doing it in OpenTX Companion as opposed to doing it in the radio so that it'll take one tenth of the time. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is set up our new inputs. Well, we're going to need an input for roll pitch yaw. And as, let's see here, let's call that RPY. And as previously mentioned, the source for that is going to be switch SA. We're going to need one for PID. And that's going to be SB. And we're going to need one for our incremental changer. And that's going to be switch SC. And that'll do it for our inputs at this point. Alrighty, so now we're ready to move on to our mixes. And the first mix that we're going to want to do is input 8 on SA, which is roll pitch yaw. So go to mixes and let's start a new line. We're going to call this one roll. And we know that the source is going to be roll pitch yaw. And then we want this to be when the SA switch is in the up position, like so. Now, because the next two are going to be so similar to this one, we can actually go here and we can say duplicate and we can say duplicate again. All right, so here we've got roll. Now we want pitch. And this is when the SA is in the middle position. And then we're going to do yaw using input eight and SA in the down position, like so. So there's our roll pitch yaw. All right, likewise, we gotta set up uh, switch SB, which SB is going to be on input nine. So mixes channel nine. Let's do our PIDs, which is proportional. And this is gonna be off the PID. And this is gonna be when the switch SB is in the up position. All right, and we can copy this or duplicate it, I guess I should say. Proportional, integral. 
That's when the switch is in the middle position. And then derivative. And that is when the switch is in the down position, like so. All right, so now the mix on SC is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna go here, and we're gonna channel 10, and this one's going to be our incremental changer. And here we're just gonna specify the switch, which is SC, and then we're not gonna have anything down here. So let's just go ahead and select OK. And now we've got our channel 10. All right, so now it's time to get into the nitty gritty. And in order to get in the nitty gritty, we've got to assign some logical switches. So let's go ahead and pop over to logical switch. And uh, the logical switch page is extremely powerful. It's got a lot of different functions, but for our purposes here today, we're only going to be using the and function. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to say when SA is in the up position and SB are in the up position, something is going to happen. And that's something to happen is what we're going to define for L01 in special functions. But for now, we have to assign logical switches for every possible switch combination that we have. Well, we've got a three position switch and a three position switch for a total of nine different possibilities. For each possibility, we're going to assign a single logical switch. So what I can do here is copy paste paste so sa in the up the only thing i want to change here is this is going to be sb to the middle it's going to be sb to the down so now i'm going to start all over again with and and this is going to be sa to the middle position and sb in the up position copy it twice paste it twice And there it is. SA up three times, SA middle, SA down, up, middle, down, up, middle, down, up, middle, down. Okay, so you remember earlier I said we needed to create a dummy switch that's going to go to a channel? Well, that switch is not going to be a real switch on the radio. It's going to be a logical switch. So what we're going to do here is we're just simply going to create one more logical switch called L10. And we're not going to put any parameters here whatsoever. So from here on logical switches, we're going to bounce back to inputs. And on input 11, we're going to create a dummy. And the source this time is going to be that L10. And then switch we don't have to do anything with. And we select OK. And then when we go to mixes, we're going to do the exact same thing. This is our dummy. Our source is going to be L10, and we don't have to put anything there. And now we've got a dummy switch. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to further define what all of these guys do when these values are true. These values are either going to be a 1 or a 0. It's either going to be true or false. So what we're going to do is we're going to further define what happens when they are true. So when A is up and B is up, what are we going to do with L01? Let's go define it. First thing we want to do is come here and we want to say L01. All right. And what we're going to do, go back to mixes and figure out what our channel is. All right. So our dummy channel is channel 11. So what we want to do is logical switch number one. We're going to set it to override channel 11. And we're going to set a value, and I just know this, it's 100. If that's confusing to you, just give me a few more moments to do the rest of the data entry, and then you'll be able to see it better. So there's LL1. Let's go ahead and we got to make, we got to make eight more of these. All right, but we're not done yet. Um, we've got to put our values. So this value is actually going to be negative 100. And negative 75. And now you can see how these logical switches are overriding channel 11. We got to turn them all on. 
save our work. All right, so remember now, our whole goal with all of this stuff is to drive all of the decisions to channel 11 so that we can override channel 11 with specific value, and then we're going to assign those values on the adjustments page in Betaflight. Let's see if the changes that we made did any good. And how we'll know that is by when we flip one of these switches, S, A, or S, B, we should not only affect the channel that they're on, like for example, SA is on channel eight, SB is on channel nine, but it will also affect channel 11. So let's go ahead and take SB and let's drop it down uh, to the middle position. This should affect channel nine, which is at negative 100, and channel 11, which is also at negative 100. And there they are. All right, so channel nine is now in the zero position because this represents negative 100, this is zero, and this is 100. That's total throw uh, of a servo, for example. Um, but if you also notice channel 11 moved, it went from 100 to negative 75 because that's what we told it to do. So likewise, if we flip it one more time, you'll see that both nine and 11 will move. Nine went all the way to 100, and 11 went to negative 50. And if I keep changing, there's 11, negative 25. You can see that we're affecting two values, no matter what we do, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Channel 11 here is the linchpin for the whole operation. Channel 11 is what's going to be connected to Betaflight and make everything work for us. Now, there's something else that we also wanted to do for each of these uh, logical switches. All right, so going back to logical switches, when LO1 is SA up and SB up, that is roll proportional. So let's go define LO1. When LO1 is true, play a track, and this one's gonna be roll proportional. So we've added the functionality that'll make it talk to us. Your integral, your proportion, pitch derivative. All right, so all those are set up. We can pull up the simulator. Roll integral. Roll proportional. Roll integral. Roll derivative. Pitch derivative. Pitch integral. Pitch proportional. Your proportional. Your integral. Your derivative. All right, we have accomplished a heck of a lot in this video, and uh, I'm going to wrap things up here right now. Uh, if things are still a little foggy in your head, don't let that bother you. This is not easy stuff, okay? Uh, my recommendation to you is that you now know a heck of a lot more than you did 20 minutes ago. So by all means, go back, rewatch the video again, and with the knowledge that you have now, I guarantee you're going to have a bunch of aha moments where you're going to start to understand how these things are gelling together, how inputs and mixes and logical switches and special functions all work together. Our bottom line goal for this video uh, was to be able to push all of the decisions to channel 11 so that we can do what we need to do in the next video, which is tie it in with Betaflight. And channel 11 is going to be our linchpin channel because that's, that's the channel that we're going to use on the adjustment screen so that we could do nine different succinct tasks based on the one channel. If you really want to be able to tune your PIDs in flight on the fly with just three switches, please join me in the next video so that we can tie a big bow on this thing in beta flight. Beyond that, we're going to make it even better by tying this whole thing in with the beta flight Lewis scripts. All right, so let's wind this sucker down. I'm Steve. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff, and uh, join me in the next video. See you there.